Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in depth into my week number 13 quarterback start or sit decisions. Inside today's video, we'll be breaking down every single game from Thursday night football all the way until Monday night football, and I'll tell you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the quarterbacks in all of those games. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. If you have any questions about week number 13, please ask down below in the comment section. We'll be talking about our sponsor, BetMGM, a little bit later. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 13 quarterback start or sit decisions. We begin with Thursday Night Football, the Buffalo Bills at the New England Patriots. Josh Allen is going to be a start in this game. Now, I understand that Kirk Cousins, Kirko Chains, Perk Cousins absolutely dismantled this Patriots defense last week in prime time on Thanksgiving, but ultimately, I do not think that Josh Allen is just going to go absolutely nuclear in this matchup. The Patriots do have one of the better defenses in all of the NFL. Now, again, do I think that Josh Allen could be the number one quarterback, a top three quarterback on the week? Of course, because you always got to give Josh Allen the benefit of the doubt that even in a tougher matchup, he could smash because of how talented he is. Again, I'm just not expecting the greatest of games out of him, but he still could do that, and he's an obvious must start regardless of the matchup. Mac Jones actually looked pretty solid up against the Minnesota Vikings. That is the best we've seen out of Mac Jones all year long. The Bills also have a pretty tough defense and ultimately one solid game out of Mac Jones doesn't necessarily move the needle towards me wanting to start him. Next up, we move to the Sunday slate beginning with the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Kenny Pickett has shown over his career thus far as a rookie his first couple of games of the year because obviously he hasn't played the whole season because Kiss and Titties Mitchell Trubisky started the year, he has shown some really strong bright spots. And while that is very promising for the future of this young quarterback who for some reason decides to wear fucking gloves like he's Teddy Bridgewater, ultimately that showing of the bright spots, the flashes of him being really good and him potentially being the franchise guy for the Steelers, even in an incredibly positive matchup up against the Falcons, I just don't feel confident enough starting Kenny Pickett, so he is going to be a sit for me. Marcus Mariota is the quarterback that is on the very fringe. He is kind of the last guy in in terms of being a start. He is a bottom of the barrel start. But the thing with Marcus Mariota is very typically he ends up having a decent fantasy day. Now, he's never going to win you your week. This is a tougher matchup up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But Marcus Mariota hasn't been turning off the uh, turning over the ball very often. And he's been pretty solid with the football all year long. And he also has some rushing upside to where maybe he becomes quarterback nine or ten on the week. So, again, I'm not banging the drum aggressively for Marcus Mariota. A lot of people have better options than Marcus Mariota, but maybe if you're diving through the waiver wire to go ahead and find a guy because maybe your quarterback is on bye this week, then ultimately I think there's a lot worse options than Marcus Mariota. At number three here, the number three game on the week, we have the Denver Broncos at the Baltimore Ravens. Now, a very funny stat that was brought up to me in the comment section and something that I've seen on TikTok is that Russell Wilson actually has more bathrooms in this motherfucker's big-ass mansion Macaulay Culkin style than he has touchdowns on the season. Now, you'd have to think that by the end of the season, he will have thrown for more touchdowns than bathrooms in his house. But uh, you never really know with how bad Russell Wilson, Mr. Unlimited, has been. Now, the Baltimore Ravens just gave up a zillion points late in the game. The Baltimore Ravens absolutely fucking crumbled like a cookie at the end of the game up against Trevor Lawrence, Doug Peterson, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. But ultimately, Russell Wilson, again, has been so fucking bad. He is absolutely atrocious. It is almost laughable how bad he has been, but the more I look at things, the more I start to realize that, hey, while Russell Wilson has been absolutely dog shit, there are also a lot of factors outside of Russell Wilson that might be attributing to this great downfall, Humpty Dumpty off the wall level of falling from grace because his offensive line's banged up. He's throwing to these receivers you've never even fucking heard of outside of Cortland Sutton. So there's a lot of things going wrong around him. Nathaniel Hackett is an absolute stooge. Now, again, I'm not excusing Russell Wilson's play, even though you could make these excuses, right? He still should be, you know, even if all these bad circumstances are going, like quarterback 20 in the NFL. 
To me, this guy might be the worst quarterback in the NFL. It's entirely laughable how bad this guy is as a starting quarterback, so he is going to be a sit. Lamar Jackson is a must-start every single week. Now, he started off the season on fucking fire NBA Jam style. Recently, he has cooled off a little bit, and I do think that this is a tougher matchup up against the Broncos, but I still think you got to roll with Lamar Jackson. Next up, we got the Green Bay Packers at the Chicago Bears. Now, obviously, when everyone was watching that primetime game of the Eagles versus versus the Packers, it seemed like Aaron Rodgers could just take the easy way out, right? He gets hurt, and he just says, you know what, fuck it, this team is down in the dumps, this team is fucking awful, we are not winning very many games, I'm not playing the best, so let's just be done for the year, right? Let's just call it quits. It is what it is. It's not going to damage my reputation, whatever. I'm going to go. I'm hurt. Let me just go sit on the bench. Instead, though, he said on the Pat McAfee show yesterday that he wants to play in this game. Now, he is a proud owner of the Chicago Bears, so that does make sense. Rodgers, though, ultimately, even up against a bad Chicago Bears defense, I mean, they traded away players, and then Eddie Jackson ended up getting hurt, so this is just an all-time bad Chicago Bears defense that just got absolutely but fucked by Magic Mike White and the New York Jumbo Jets. Even in that scenario, though, with how bad the Bears' defense is, I just don't feel confident enough in Aaron Rodgers, especially since it's very clear that he's going to be banged up going into this game. Now, if Justin Fields ends up starting for the Chicago Bears, then... I am very confident in starting Justin Fields. The Packers' defense has not been very uh, very good this season, so I really do think that Justin Fields would be a start. He is also going to be banged up entering the game, though, if he does play. I don't think the Bears are going to play Justin Fields, but it's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities here. And again, my thought process on this situation when it comes to Justin Fields is, hey, it seems like we have our quarterback. If I'm the Bears, that's what I'm thinking. Let's not risk him getting further injured, hurting himself even more. Let's just bench him and maybe we'll wait a couple weeks, right? They have a bye coming up. We'll bench him this game. He comes out out of the bye. Let him play. Or maybe we just shut him down for the season because we don't want him to get hurt. This team's a disaster. That's what I would do. Now, again, I'm not Matt Eberflus. I'm not the Chicago Bears, and I'm not an NFL GM owner, so what the fuck do I know? But ultimately, that's just kind of my thought process behind things. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Detroit Lions. Both Trevor Lawrence as well as Jared Goff are going to be starts in this game. Trevor Lawrence slung his cock down the throat of the Baltimore Ravens defense last week. Doug Peterson's massive balls ended up calling a ballsy play at the end of the game to win. Very exciting offense the Jaguars were in that game sounded like fucking Yoda talking a little bit weird there. I could have said, oh, the Jaguars offense looked really good in that game. I don't think that's what I said, but maybe I did. Uh, the, the Jaguars are looking pretty good. Trevor Lawrence has been pretty hit or miss this season. We've seen the highest of highs for Lawrence. Really great games. We've seen other games. Uh, not just the game last week against the Ravens, where he was legitimately a solid fantasy option. But then we've seen games where he really uh, struggled. Here up against the Lions defense, though, I think we are going to get a very solid game. The Lions defense is soft as baby shit, so I fully expect Trevor Lawrence to have a huge performance. The Jacksonville Jaguars defense has been a lot like their offense, pretty hit or miss. They started off the season relatively strong. Recently, they have kind of fallen off the edge of the earth. Ultimately here, I think Jared Goff is start worthy. We might be seeing Jamison Williams suit up in this game that doesn't really affect my opinion though on Jared Goff because I don't think if Jamison Williams plays He's going to be out there a lot of the time, right? They're kind of going to just ease him in. But again, Jared Goff is start worthy. Not necessarily the best start of the week, but kind of one of those guys like Mariota. But I do like Jared Goff better than Mariota. Next up, we got the Cleveland Browns at the Houston Texans. But before we break this game down at the quarterback position, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor of today's video, BetMGM. Now, if you're a brand new user to BetMGM and click on the link in the video description down below or in the pinned comment and bet $10 on on any World Cup pregame money line, you will win $200 in free bets as long as another goal is scored in the World Cup, which is guaranteed to happen. So your bet can lose. Your team could draw to the other team. And then as long as there's another goal scored in the World Cup, which is guaranteed to happen, 
you will receive $200 in free bets. I'm going to throw it onto the screen right now. What I'm going to do is I would sign up. I'm going to navigate to the top where it says soccer, click on that, and then pick whatever game I want. I'm just going to go with the biggest favorite, bet $10 on that, and I will win $200 in free bets, whether this bet wins or loses as long as there's another goal in the World Cup, which again is guaranteed to happen. Now, this bet will not last. This offer will not last forever because it expires on December 4th. So make sure you take advantage of it right now before it disappears. And again, these free bets aren't just, you don't have to just use them on the World Cup. You can bet them on the NFL, NBA, college football, uh, college basketball, whatever sport you want, NHL. So make sure you guys do check that out. Helps me out a ton and helps you out a ton, right? You're getting $200 of free bets essentially for free. So back on into things, we got the uh, Cleveland Browns up against the Houston Texans, Kyle Allen versus Deshaun Watson. Now, there's a lot of thoughts about Deshaun Watson entering this game. This could be a game where the fact that he's playing the Texans is just going to elevate his play and he is going to slaughter the fuck out of the Houston Texans defense, right? The Houston Texans defense is terrible. We saw the Dolphins put up 30 points in the first half against them and easily the Cleveland Browns have a good enough offense to do the same thing. But there's also the other side of that where, hey, this is a huge game for Watson, his first game back. Maybe he's going to be rusty. Maybe he's going to make this game out to be bigger than it really is. Like, hey, I'm playing up against the Texans. This is my former team. This is that. This is this. I want to beat the Dolphins piss out of this team and then he's in his own head and he's throwing bad throws making dumb decisions and that's just kind of how we got to see things here now I am someone who personally believes that even Deshaun Watson coming off of this two-year hiatus it's not like he hasn't been practicing right I don't think he's going to be rusty sure he wasn't necessarily practicing with the team the whole time because that wasn't possible but it's not like he was sitting on his couch playing fucking war zone with Kyler Murray crushing some Doritos and Mountain Dew right that's not what was happening Deshaun's going to go out there and I think have a fantastic performance up against the Texans now obviously there is the exact same downside we saw last week with the Dolphins going up against the Texans and that is the fact that the Texans are so fucking bad that Deshaun Watson might might throw two touchdowns in the first half, two only through one, and then the second half, they just run the ball with nine-inch Nicholas Chubb and Kareem Hunt 7,000 times, and then you get out of there. You won the game. So Deshaun Watson might not have the best performance. Ultimately, though, I am very confident in him. I think he has the upside to be the number one quarterback on the week, so I would be comfortable playing him here up against the Texans. Kyle Allen is absolute dog shit. I don't know if any of you watched the Dolphins versus uh, Texans game. It was on red zone every once in a while because it was just... A slaughter, right? The Dolphins absolutely destroyed the Houston Texans, so it was on every once in a while. And Kyle Allen was getting pounded from the back repeatedly. Uh, it was it was pretty funny to watch as a Dolphins fan. Next up, we move to the New York Jumbo Jets at the Minnesota Vikings. Kirk Cousins unleashed himself in prime time. I don't think I've ever seen Kirk Cousins play a game in prime time where he looked that good. We've made so many jokes all year. Sleepy Kirk Cousins after the game is after one o'clock, even in four o'clock. Sometimes he's a little bit sleepy, but he absolutely uncorked the football up against the New England Patriots who are very stout defense now, as are the Jumbo Jets. The Jets also have one of the better defenses in the NFL, if not the best defense in all of the National Football League. So this is definitely not a pushover match. This is going to be a hard-fought game for Mr. You-like-that Kirk Cousins, but ultimately, he's looked so good. He has so many weapons around him that you got to start him this week. Again, Kirk Cousins is never one of those guys that's really going to win you your week. You play Kirk Cousins, he finishes inside maybe quarterback 14 through 8 every single week. Maybe he has a game where he's top 5, but he typically never puts the backpack on and carries your fucking team Dora style, but he will probably not be the reason why you lose. He probably won't shit the bed. Magic Mike White of the Jets. Again, this guy will absolutely filleted the Chicago Bears defense last week, but that shouldn't be a surprise to many because the Bears defense is ass and Mike White is good and uh, mono, no, not mono man, Sam. He's now on the Panthers fucking Zach Wilson. You know what's bad? You know Zach Wilson's bad when in my head I just instantly went to Sam Darnold. Um, it's pretty telling of how bad uh, the MILF hunter is, but Mike White here, the Vikings defense, not the best against the pass. I think this should be another solid game out of him. Now, last week he had like Probably a ceiling game, right? You don't really think Mike White's going to do that against the Vikings, but I do think he will be start worthy. Next up, we move to the Washington Commanders at the New York 
Talk Football Giants. Both Heineke and Jones are sits. Heineke came out the gate hot after becoming the starter after Carson Wentz came down. Three straight games of being really solid. Recently, it's been the exact opposite of that. Now, again, Heineke is an incredibly uh, fun player to watch. He makes crazy plays, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he finished as like quarterback 13 in this game against the Giants. The Giants defense isn't really all that good. But then again, the commanders keep winning, and Heineke is kind of just there. He's game managing the game. Now, he is like... The weirdest game manager ever because he also makes these stupid fucking throws where he throws into quadruple coverage uh, and somehow it doesn't get intercepted or it does. It's a pick six or sometimes he throws a ball into fucking five different dudes and somehow Terry McLaurin catches it. So he's very exciting to watch. Um, but uh, he could be the crux of your fantasy team. He could he could really sink your ship, so I'm not looking for Heineke this week. Daniel Jones is a relatively safe option, but he's also a sit. The commander's defense has looked really solid as of recently. Chase Young should be back in this game. Uh, not a lock, but he, he should be back this week. This game also kind of just reeks of being ultra low scoring, so I kind of just want to fade away from both Heineke as well as Danny Dimes. Next up, we got a revenge game for A.J. Brown. The Titans at the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts is must start every single week. I don't even have to go too in depth about it. He's like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. You could talk about the matchup. You could say, oh, I have him ranked this week at six instead of one. Doesn't fucking matter. You're still playing him. You still know the deep amount of upside that this guy has. Jalen Hurts, oh man, oh man. He he made the Packers defense look foolish. He was dissecting him up like a fucking frog in high school. It was so impressive how good Jalen Hurts looked. The Titans defense is no joke. I'm not here to tell you that the Tennessee Titans defense sucks cock and that this is going to be just the easiest matchup ever for Jalen Hurts. I'm not not here to tell you that, but I, what I will tell you is that any given week, regardless of the matchup, Hurts can be the number one quarterback on the week, so he's a start. Uh, the Eagles pass defense is pretty tough, so Tannehill is going to be a sit. Now, I will make it important to note Jordan Davis going to return in this game, but Davis is more of a run defender. So if he plays, that's a no bueno for Derrick Henry. Tannehill should be, again, just one of those guys. He, he's basically like a worse version of Mariota or one of those guys that's like a fringe start that you can kind of talk yourself into, but against the Eagles. Nick, the, the Packers played so good last week against the Eagles. I, I just don't see Ryan Tannehill carving up the fucking Eagles defense. Next up, we move to Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks at the LA Rams. The Rams have thrown in the towel. The Rams have given up Aaron Donald on the IR because he's hurt. Hurt. If you're listening to the podcast, he's hurt with the um air quotes, the the wink, wink, wink. He's hurt. Uh, Cooper Cup, probably done for the season. Allen Robinson out for the season. Stafford, I don't think he's going to come back. Bryce Perkins is the starting quarterback. This Rams team is dead in the fucking water. Bryce Perkins is a sit, obviously. The Seattle Seahawks defense isn't even all that great, but I just don't know how anyone could be confident starting Bryce Perkins. Geno Smith has been downright fantastic. Looked great up against the Las Vegas Raiders last week. Obviously, they lost that game, but uh, Geno's been... Like, he's really only had one or two games where it's like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have started Geno. And that's very telling because normally in the past you start Geno and it's like the the last shot, right? You're at the bottom of the barrel. Everyone fucking your league has three quarterbacks, so now you have to play Geno Smith. Uh, but this year it's the exact opposite. You actually want to play Geno Smith. Very shocking. Uh, crazy that after being in the NFL for so long, now he's finally good. Next up, we got the Miami Dolphins at the San Francisco 49ers. Now, this is going to be a tough defensive battle, in my opinion. Both teams have excellent defenses, though I will give Tua and Jimmy Guap the nod. Now, Tua's going to be playing without his star left tackle, Teron Armstead. As a Dolphins fan, Nick Bosa might literally destroy Tua. Um, I'm pretty scared of Bosa versus the Dolphins offensive line, but ultimately... Tua has such a quick release. He has one of the quickest releases in the National Football League. And Mike McDaniel is no fucking stooge. He's no dumbass. He's going to be able to dial up some plays that even if the offensive line crumbles, the offensive line gets beaten in half of a second, then Tua's still going to be able to get the ball out. They're going to design plays, I believe, fully in Mike McDaniel. Now, this is a game that Tua scares me. So Tua's not like last week against the Texans. I told you guys that I was nervous about him potentially getting benched. He's not getting benched in this game, but I'm worried about this being a low scoring defensive matchup 
between both these teams. So Tua's not a guy that I'm banging the drum for this week. Obviously, he's better than a guy like Mariotti. He's better than some of those bottom-of-the-barrel starts that we've kind of talked about. Like, I'd rather have him than Jared Goff. But if you get what I'm saying, this isn't necessarily the most positive matchup for me. Jimmy Garoppolo up against the Dolphins defense. Dolphins defense significantly better at home compared to away. This game is in San Francisco, so that would point towards a decent game out of Jimmy Guap, Jimmy Pornstar, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G-String. Um, I, I think, again, he's one of those guys where he doesn't really sink your team's ship. He never really elevates you towards greatness. Should be a decent game out of him, but again, I don't really expect anything amazing. Uh, next up, we move to probably the game of the week, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Cincinnati Bengals. Joe, Bur Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty versus Patrick Mahomes. Uh, these games have been certified like... You know how people, they go out to drink and then they'll be like, damn, last night was a movie. This is a game that is going to be a movie. This is like straight up Clash of the fucking Titans. This is amazing. This is going to be a very fun one to watch. I will have a keen eye on the Dolphins game, of course, as a Dolphins fan. But this is one of these games where it's like this on paper. Now, again, it doesn't always end up being like that, right? But on paper, this is the game where if you could watch one game on the week, you would pick this one, right? This is a fantastic game. Uh, Burrow and Mahomes, you're starting them. You're starting them every week. Jamar Chase, more than likely going to return in this game. Should be a very fun one. Hopefully a high-scoring, tit-for-tat, rock'em, sock'em, robots-esque affair. Should be a really fun game. So I'm excited. So I sound like a fucking Canadian there. Uh, I'm pretty excited for Burrow versus Mahomes. Um, this one's been a barn burner at the last... Uh, last year so let's uh let's be excited let's get pumped up for this one next up we got the la chargers at the turn your volume down the las vegas raiders in viva las vegas justin herbert the pervert and Derek carr starts cars really turn things up he's hit the nos like he's playing one of those racing games when you go to the bowling alley and you hit the button it goes and your car like fucking picks up and you're on two wheels you know what i'm talking about yeah, that's what uh, Derek Carr's done. He's hit the NOS. This Raiders team, not dead yet, uh, but the Chargers, uh, with one strong left punch, could uh, put them in a coffin. Derek Carr, though, ultimately uh, is a start here. Justin Herbert's a must-start every week. I don't think Mike Williams is going to play. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Doesn't really affect my opinion. The Raiders' defense is nut low, one of the worst defenses in the NFL. This could be a really high-scoring game as well. The whole 4 o'clock slate um, is very exciting, in, except for, I think, Seahawks at Rams is at 4 o'clock. That game's a fucking snooze fest. But besides that, Chargers at Raiders should be fun. Chiefs at Bengals should be great. Dolphins at Niners. Very exciting, uh, aside from that other game, of course. Uh, so Herbert and Carr both starts here. I like Carr a lot more than I did over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I still like Herbert better than Carr. Next up, we got Sunday Night Football. Snooze fest. Colts at Cowboys. Matt Ryan literally looked like he forgot how to play football. Like... He had no idea what the fuck he was doing. That one run was kind of impressive. The clock management by Jeff Saturday on a Sunday, or actually it was Jeff Saturday on a Monday, uh, like that joke about a horse. Uh, Matt Ryan here is a sit. He's got to be a sit. The Cowboys defense is good, and Matt Ryan, again, has looked bad. Dickie Dak Prescott is a start. I don't think this is necessarily going to be a massacre where the Cowboys let their nuts hang all over the, Cowboy or all over, uh, the Colts, and this ends up being like a absolute smash matchup where Dak goes crazy because we all know once they get close to the goal line, like Zeke or Pollard are going to score, which does limit Dickie Dak Prescott's upside. Again, Dak is one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League. This is a positive matchup for him. So obviously he's a must-start candidate. Final game here, Bucks versus the Saints in Tampa Bay. There has been a report that was tweeted out about how Tom Brady wants to go back to New England um, and he's going to go back next year. Come on. Come on. Come come back, Tom Brady. I, I hope you do. I hope the Dolphins can retire your bum ass. I can't stand this guy. Um Yeah, dude. You, you can't beat the Falcons, the Panthers, the Saints, and you're gonna you're gonna come to the AFC East with the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Bills. Good luck, pal. He's not doing that. It, like that that has to be Fugazi. There's no way he's doing that. Matchup against the Saints is decent. Brady's been a disaster this year. Um he was two and zero prior to his or after his divorce, then he lost last week. Um didn't look great in that performance. He, he's still a guy that you start, but again, how how pumped up can you get for Brady at this point? Dalton's a sit. I'm fucking tired of Andy Dalton. I've said this a million times, so not trying to sound like a broken record, but fuck Andy Dalton. We need famous 
Jameis Winston. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hit that like button. It would help me out a ton. Make sure you check out our sponsor, BetMGM. Bet $10 on any World Cup pregame money line. Win $200 in free bets as long as there's a goal scored during the World Cup, which is guaranteed to happen. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great day. Hit that outro. Good boy.